Hello everyone and thanks for watching Fast Track Tutorials. In this quick tutorial I wanted to go over on how to create this fuzzy moss effect that you can see over here that you can use in your games. Now it doesn't matter if you use Unreal Engine or Unity for this as long as you are able to edit your shaders a little bit. You should be able to follow along with the same technique. We will be using Unreal Engine 5 and we will be using 3ds Max but you can use any other 3D program. It's super simple and of course we will be using a little bit of Substance Designer. Okay, so what do we need? We need of course a rock. I'm just using mega scans for this tutorial. So here I have a simple rock like this. Uh, we need of course a moss texture, which I also have over here. And pretty much for the rest we are going to use Unreal Engine, but you can also do this in Unity. Although you will need to of course create a custom shader inside of Unity for our technique. And we will be using 3ds Max, but you can use any program you want, because it's just very basic stuff. And a little bit of Substance Designer. So what we're going to do is we are basically going to create a layering effect of different moss planes that have alternating alphas. And what will happen is you almost get like a depth effect when you do that. So it is quite an old school technique. Uh, I think it even is being used in like the very old crisis games. So, but it is still quite effective if you want to just quickly create some moss. So I'm going to go mostly for moss on like here the tops a little bit like you can see over here. So... Inside of 3ds Max, what I'm going to do is, here is our original model. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to press uh, Ctrl V to copy it. Then I'm going to isolate this model so that we are working on our copy. And we basically want to just select the geometry that um, will have our actual moss. Now, we are going to fade out the edges of that geometry, so don't worry about it too much. And basically, if I look at this, so right now... This geometry, it will be really annoying to select. Because if I, for example, use the selection technique that we are going to use, which is by going to faces and then going up here in your editable poly to selection and then in, set your angle, you can basically select by the angle from the top, like this. Or you can do manual selection by hand. But you can see that this, it is a mess. And it will take very long to actually clean up all of this type of stuff. So whenever I have that problem, what I like to do... And pretty much every program has this has something similar. However, I believe that ZBrush does it best because in ZBrush you have something called Siri Mesher. Inside of 3ds Max, it is something called uh, Retopologize. So where are you? Here, oh, here, Reto Retopology, sorry. If I select that one and go from Reform to QuadriFlow, and let's set the face count to around 8,000 and turn on Adaptive. Adaptive will basically make sure that um, it just gives enough faces in specific areas. And if you then press Compute, you will get a much cleaner mesh. And then the nice thing is that we can then select that mesh. And after that, we can optimize it again, just to keep a polygon count low. So the final mesh will still end up with like a really ugly look, like you can see over here. But at least it will be... Here, see? But at least it will be a lot easier uh, to manage. So we got something like this. It does not. It needs to be close to your original mesh. But it doesn't need to follow it perfectly. So let's say that I have this. I can now convert this to an edit poly. And this will give me a lot less cleanup. So if I now go back to my selection. Um, just my face select. And so yeah. You can choose. You can use a spray paint select over here. Like this to do like some selection. Uh, you can go ahead and you can use your lesser tools if you want. I will be using this a little bit. Or you can select by normal. Or you can even select by view or by angle. So if you do by normal. And you set the normal to the Z axis. You can see over here that I can basically select. Based upon these angles. Which is really nice. So I can pretty much just select it in the areas that I want. To have most of my moss located. And once I've done that, I pretty much can go ahead and with my lesser select turned on, I often like to turn on ignore back facing. And then I can just quickly go in and do like some selection cleanup. Because you do not really want to have two things. You do not want to have like these lone edges over here. Uh, because you don't want to just have like a single face. And you just want to kind of like have everything connected. So I'm just going to go in here. And I'm going to just see where I want to connect. Or it needs to be like a proper, proper disconnect. But not like disconnected by one single face. And as I said before, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to do this very quickly. So I will probably not... Here, let me just quickly show you. So in these areas, I would do it like this. And then here at the tops, 
I would go in and just quickly do it by hand. You do not want to have this kind of stuff. So just go, go ahead and just get rid of that kind of stuff. And for the rest, you can just uh, nice like work with this. And just get the moss exactly where, whoops, exactly where you want it to be. Like that. So let me just quickly pause the video. And I will just do this quickly off camera because else it will take far too long. Also get rid of these ones. Okay, here we go. I did this super quick and super sloppy, just so you know. So if this would be like a production model, I would spend a lot more time on it. But basically I have this now. I can press Ctrl I to invert my selection and just basically get rid of everything that I do not want. So then this is what we have left. So this is going to be our, roughly our moss shape. Uh, if you see any singular faces like you can see over here and here, just get rid of those. Because we are going to give this an inset and we all know that if you do an inset on like one single tiny face. Um, well, actually no, we don't all know, but in this case it would just be overkill. So you don't really want to do that. Uh, over here, I'm not even able to select that. Oh wait, <laughs> that's because it is not a singular face. So yeah, basically you just want to do that kind of cleanup over here just to keep it nice. So, now that we have this mesh over here, uh, I think at this point we probably first want to do an optimization and then we would want to do an inset. So if you just go ahead and do like a simple pro optimizer, this can be quite sloppy, but this is also quite nice because it will give you less of like a very square fall off and more of like just a triangular fall off. And you just want to basically tone this down, not that far. You want to tone this down up until the point that you still keep the silhouette. Because this needs to hover just above your shape. So you do want to get quite close to the original shape. Let's do like 50 for my in my case over here. And then what you can do is you can... Let's do one quick copy. And this copy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer that I'll call backup. So turn that off. And the reason that I do that is because I want to just already collapse my edit poly by this point. Um, over here, I don't trust... This stuff, because it's black. Oh, no, wait, that's why. I still don't really... Yeah, okay, let's just move it up a little bit. Let's do it like that. So, we now have this mesh. Now, what we're going to do is basically we're going to inset everything. So, let's just go ahead and press Ctrl A and give everything an inset so that we can fade out using vertex colors. We can nicely fade out the edges. So, we give it our inset. It does not need to be a lot. Let's do around two. Probably. There we go. Uh, inset does sometimes create some problems for like this kind of stuff, as I said before. That's why you kind of like want to remove those. But for the rest, if there are a few problems left, you will never be able to see it because we literally fade those pieces out. Over here, this sometimes also happens. And honestly, if I'm lazy, I just do collapses. Here, see? I just kind of like collapse everything together. And yes, it does technically break things a little bit. But sometimes it's just the quickest way. But yeah, so you would kind of like want to go in here and you would just nicely want to look around and just make sure that everything is correct. However, I personally, once again, I will not be doing that because it's just a quick YouTube tutorial. But uh, yeah, for your final mesh. So now that we have this mesh, now what we're going to do is we want to give these outsides over here, these vertices, we basically want to start fading everything in. So we want to make these black. And everything else will be white. Now, very easy. First of all, press Ctrl A. And you can all go up here and make sure that the color is white. Or you can scroll all the way down and make sure that the vertex colors over here are white. Once you've done that, what you can do is if you go to your selection. We want to do a nur numeric selection. So over here, if we set the edges to 3 and set this to is equal to, what it will do is it will select all the vertices that are basically... Um, that are missing a connection. In this case, wherever there is no face. So that should... Oh, over, yeah, yeah, that should do the trick. It's sometimes a bit difficult to see. Although sometimes it does over here also like add some of these vertices. Now, if I have these... Honestly, I'm, I'm honestly not too worried about that. Uh, the only thing is that there's something strange going on with my selection. Oh, there we go. Now it works. So for these, like, you can very quickly do like a pass... Here, see, it was literally, I like to like it. It does not happen often. So you can just very quickly have like a look around. And if you see anyone, 
then you can just deselect it. But now this is the only way because you cannot do it with edge selections because uh, in 3ds Max you cannot color edge selections. But having this, I like to go down here and set my vertex color simply to black, like this. Now if you want to preview this, you can add a vertex paint modifier, which don't I have it over here? Oh no, I don't. Okay, then let's go all the way down. Vertex paint. And then if you go to your previewing, you basically should be able to see something like this, that these vertices, they are black. Now, it might not seem as strong, but of course we can boost this mask inside of Unreal Engine. So we don't need to worry, worry about it right now. So this is all totally fine. We are now ready to go. So pretty much the only thing that you need to do for this one to finish it off is now that we have over here our mesh, we are going to add a push modifier. And this is once again a modifier that is also in every other 3D program, although it might be called different. Or what you can do is you can just uh, move things around or scale them up. What I can do with the push, I can basically, see, carefully move my mesh around a little bit or out a little bit. So I can scale it out based on normal. So you can also call this a scale based on normal or move based on normal, whatever you want. And then you can see over here that I'm kind of like just sticking this above it. And then finally, all I need to do is I need to UV unwrap this. I tend to just do an automatic unwrap. So I'm just going to go to UVW map box and give it an even value of like 500 by 500 by 500. And that's it. I, I just need some kind of an auto unwrap. You don't need to worry about it at all. Hell, you can even use world space or triplanar mapping inside of Unreal Engine if you want. It does not matter. You just need something so that it does not look stretched. And that's it. So we now have this mesh. We are going to call this moss underscore zero one. And then basically all that we need to do is we need to go ahead and press control V to copy it. And then for moss zero two, we need to add another push modifier and set it just above the first one. See, and the further you set them apart, the fuzzier it looks, but also the more risk you run that it looks uh, bad, basically, because there is a point where you can actually see the layers. So we are just going to go ahead and go for three layers. So I'm going to set it like here, like a little bit above it. And then I'm going to leave my push modifier on here so that I can later on change it if needed. So I'm just going to do another control V over here, MOS03. And once again, push it out a little bit. So we now have MOS01, MOS02, and MOS03. So this is what you end up with your base mesh with three layers of moss sitting above it. At that point, what you can do is you can go ahead and you can export this to Unreal Engine. Actually, before we export, I almost forgot, we need to give it its own materials. So let's make a material called rock. Another one called moss 01. Another one called moss 02. And another one called moss underscore 03. So the base can just be your rock. And then you can simply select MOS01 and apply your material. MOS02, apply your material. And MOS03, apply your material. Over here. Okay, there we go. And now you can just go ahead and you can export. Okay, so I have imported my mesh. I can even drag it on here. So here you can see that this is our mesh. I will just very quickly... If I can find it, because I kind of like lost... Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, we can already drag it on here, but um, we will. I will set this up properly later on. So as you can see, here is our moss with our stuff. So as you can see here, it already like, starts to look a bit interesting. So what we're going to do now is we need to create a special material along with three different masks, which are very easy masks. But um, after that, we should be ready to go. So let's get started with our masks, which is, it is both the easiest and the trickiest because it can make or break our model. So for our masks, we can go ahead and we can go inside of Substance Designer and to generate them, we basically need three masks that have slightly different uh, densities. So if we go in here, they need to be like spotty masks. So if we go, for example, let's say that we grab like a dirt one, for example. Basically, this is what you want to do. You want to have one that has like a lot of moss and every white dot would be like a moss mask. One that has that does not have a lot and one that has almost none. 
So I can go in here and I can add a transform for the first one and blend the original with my transform. The reason I want to do that is because if I set this to max lighten, I can then click on my transform and simply wiggle it around. And now you can see that I instantly have like a lot of moss. That's number one. Next, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to add a histogram scan over here. Two probably actually. One of them over here will just carefully like tone down our position a little bit and play around with our contrast. So that as you can see, we have from a lot to less, although we might have actually be able to use this one, but we'll see. And then what we need to do is we need to have another histogram scan that has almost nothing. Let's do something like this. To get started with, we kind of like need to balance it out. Also, by the way, I'm going to just quickly duplicate my dirts and I'm going to change the seed because else it will not look nice. Um, if you do not change the seed, what will basically happen is because the dirt is always in the same location, uh, it will just become one solid mask and we don't want that. So now we have like these different dirt bits like this. And now all we need to do is we need to export them. So we can create an output. Let's call this one um, moss underscore mask underscore zero one. Copy that into your layer and then copy this three times over here. Like this. I'm just doing this quickly because moss underscore mask underscore zero two. Just to make sure that um, underscore zero three. There we go because I don't want to waste too much time on this. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can export this. So let me just quickly export this and import this into Unreal. Here we go. So I got these three over here into Unreal. And now what we can do is we can create a new material. And I'm just going to call this moss underscore master. And now we can set everything up. 